edition of our AEW NXT post show. How you doing? What did you think? It was Wednesday night. It looks like both TNT and USA had quite the shows to talk about this week. We have blood and teeth on AEW. Drake is still surviving. A big man main event on NXT as well. A whole lot to talk about on both sides of the coin. Depend, depend, no matter what you like tonight, you got a whole lot to like. Uh, joining me, uh, we're going three heads tonight. All right. Pittsburgh, PA, the one, the only city of three rivers right there. Dominic D'Angelo, Double D. You can hear him on the Danny Cage and Double D Show, also in the Russell's Own Radio podcast feed, and the man in the city where we were supposed to have WrestleMania this year, but we didn't because of, um, you know, uh, <laughs> let's see how long I can go without mentioning the obvious thing. Um, D- Robert DeFeelis, how are you, Robert? I'm good. I'm a, I'm a fan of Double D's, so uh, hey, thanks. Pretty good. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> Come on, I don't know which one. Robert, what is this? 1998? What are, what are you doing here? Come on. We're gonna have a I'm being honest, is what I'm doing. Go ahead. Yeah, sure, sure, buddy. Uh, now, if you're with us live, don't don't uh, forget to get your comments on screen here. I see some uh, familiar faces. All right, you can tell us what you thought of AEW, what you thought of NXT. If you're watching on YouTube, get your comments down there below. I'll be joining you guys as well. And if you're with us on the podcast feed. Don't forget to rate the show. Share it up, okay? It's the virtual couch. You're on there. It's not a podcast at you. It's a podcast with you. Oh, yes. We're trying to make a difference. So let's start with AEW. They had their TNT title tournament semifinals. Say that four times fast. It got bloody. It seems like the predictable outcome has been reached, but uh, it certainly seems like it was a fun ride to get there. Dominic, uh, we got bloody with Dustin Rhodes and Lance Archer. The murder hawk monster has advanced to the finals. What did you think of it? I thought overall it was a good show. I feel um, there was a little couple miss miss spots. I feel not not in that match as much, but like just throughout the show, there's a little like you know hiccups here and there. But overall, I thought it was a really solid show. Like I think something that really stands out for AEW right now is the less the not as uh, you're focused on one title right now. You're not focused on like all these other championships, and that's till can be to WWE and uh, NXT detriment sometimes. Is all the titles? This has a mm-hmm. main focus of the TNT Championship, and what I think it's been a healthy ride for them throughout this whole process of going with the. COVID-19. Do you think some of that yeah. is like circumstantial? Just because we know almost all the television we've gotten the last month, month and a half was taped in two days, just about almost five weeks ago. Uh, do you think maybe that circumstantial of, Hey, we're just going to focus on this tournament. We're going to get this tournament to be the main thing. And after that, we'll put together the rest of the card. Do, do you think that that circumstantially that kind of laid out in a good way for them? Yeah, because they, I think they are so. leaning on tape content. The whole show has been taped for weeks now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that definitely helps. And uh, it, they already had their like a game plan made and it shows. And I think they're executing it pretty well overall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it doesn't matter what you guys are watching. You guys can join into the comments here as well. We'll, we'll, We try not to give away too much of the big spoilers, but obviously some of the big stuff we got to talk about here. Uh, Some really fun segments with Chris Jericho tonight, right, Dom? Oh, yeah. it was Jericho is always on point with the commentary. He does this amazing balance of being still being a heel, but still getting talent over, whether it's a referee to uh, a jobber to stars that he's not supposed to like, but, you know, he, he gives a lot of credit to. He does an awesome job. Tony's just a great balance with that, and keeping keeping things moving. They're amazing chemistry. Uh, Jericho's just great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fantastic. Jericho, for me, when he returns to action next week, it's going to be a little heartbreaking to not have him on commentary being great and Tony Schiavone being great alongside him. I like the, what we saw from the TNT title tournament, we saw Cody and Darby Allen had a great third bout. We a lot of uh, working on the leg for Darby. Brandy got hurt, still came back out to support her husband. Cody goes on. Dustin Rhodes gets killed for about 20 minutes, including two commercial breaks. That was a little rough. I don't think we need that, like in the main event segment. But it was, was it drawn long, out? Far too long. I thought it was good. I, I liked it. I, I had no problem with the length of it, actually. I feel, uh, you know, to get Lance Archer over as, like, this monster that he is, um, mm-hmm. I thought the ending was very well done and almost like a Game of Thrones-esque finish where it's like, oh, God, you, they really they put Dustin down. 
<laughs> like in, in a pot in a good way like story how much was the blood here now once again i i watch nxt on wednesdays uh, and you guys cover aew for me and i kind of catch up later but a lot of people are talking about the blood tonight that is something that aew has utilized in the past whether intentional or not uh and we don't see wwe using blood that often if at all uh is is blood still a fun factor for you guys in wrestling or is it something where it just has you know, because of the coronavirus. See, that was my first mention. Uh, you know, maybe some people are a little more. You know, just re- everyone being in the ring is weird with no fans, right? You know? we, we've got we've gotten relatively used to that. But blood is that something that kind of unnerves you? Because it isn't. It isn't something uh, I wouldn't say I'm like. Oh, I can't watch this match because they're bleeding. Uh, but watching it live and knowing they're bleeding now does feel a little bit weird. Like, if I was watching something from the 80s, I wouldn't care. But if I'm watching it now, there isn't like, oh, I don't want to see this, but I'm like, kind of like, do you have to? <laughs> you know, you know, like that you type of thing. what's crazy is COVID-19 was the furthest thing from my mind until you just said okay. it right now. And then I'm thinking, why the hell was he bleeding in the time of coronavirus? Because let's be real. This was not like, like, oh, uh, Randy got cut open because the ladder fell on him. This is like... Dusty road style. I'm just gonna, you know, jig my forehead a little bit, and you see all this blood coming out. And now that I think about it, why? You really mm-hmm. need it to bleed. Uh, Saul Sultan uh, texting here saying, uh, "Blood is a must in wrestling. It's a must. You must bleed in wrestling. Is it a must? I don't know. It used to. Be. I, I think mean, it's a must. In I think it's a must in ways where it doesn't have to happen. I'll be right time, back. Yeah, I, I, got, I got a pizza for, appointment with the other. I'll be right back. Continue. On. It's fine. No, I feel blood is a must, but not as super duper often. Like once in a while, but you need to have blood in wrestling. I agree with that. Yeah, uh, um, Bill Pritchard I, said in our group chat that it's not wrestling until Rhodes is bleeding on my TV. And yes, I, yes. I feel compelled to agree. With they do utilize blood in the best way possible. As uh, we hear uh, something jiggling in the background there. I think but, Kev's murdering someone. That's <laughs> right. We could put the stuff in the oven. But um, yeah. I, I really, I didn't need it to go as long as it did. It was just a weird vibe. Yeah, I Kevin. feel like, I feel uh, that, you know, they played up Dustin struggling at the beginning. And then he got a little bit of his fire back. You know, I executed a. He couldn't get the power slam off initially. Later on, executes the power slam. Um, I love Lance Archer's trash talk in the throughout the whole match, where he's just like yelling at Aubrey, tell, ask him to quit, ask him to quit, and all this different stuff. I feel um, it, it really just exuded uh, a lot of kind of that older factor of wrestling, where it's you know you're not used to seeing like a you know what maybe a Darby Allen or. Uh, Sammy Guevara will put to the ring, but this is kind of like the balance of what other fans like about wrestling too. I thought it was, I thought it was a good main event. Uh, we have Mac watching in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Thank you, everyone watching around the world. If you're watching for the first time, don't be afraid to uh, tell us where you guys are listening live. If you put this in the podcast side of things, we want your comments as well. You guys can tweet those to us at Kev Kellum at Duvelis. At Dominic D'Angelo. Um, say that all the time with my Midwestern accent here. A uh, <laughs> lot of different takes here. Yes, I can confirm I do have a pizza. You guys could hear that really loudly on this brand new mic I have. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. it wasn't too loud. No, Kev, Ooh. it sounds like you're murdering you're someone. Body, Kev, but, you, know, uh, you know what yeah. I was murdering? I was murdering this pizza. <laughs> What'd you call it again? What what's your uh, I, I tried to pizza? I tried to be really Dexter Loomis after I said it, like really cold eyed. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so overall, pretty strong episodes of, of AEW this week, huh? I would say so. I would say not their best episode, but I would say it was a solid episode. It was overall. like a six. Let's settle it down here, boys. It was like a six. <laughs> no, Damn. I, Robert I taking the glove off and slapping somebody in the face, bringing them down to an even six. I mean, like, I... I get what we're doing here. I just don't want to do the whole thing where it was like, oh, it's so good. It was an okay show. It was decent. Uh, John Moxley told us all to call our grandmothers, you know, and I thought about it for a second. (laughs) I no joke. I legitimately have to call my grandmother. And uh, that was an awesome reminder to have. I feel uh, Moxley. That was the promo of the week is that whole uh, thing. Just him. Yeah. Walking around talking. He just, he calls out like what he's, you know, what he's excited about going to do a live appearance coming up on, on dynamite. And then, uh, 
it doesn't name drop Renee, but mentions Renee. He does um, mention Renee. Does mention Renee. Um, and it's just he's like, I'm bringing Metallica tapes. I'm doing all this stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> it was quality. Quality promo bottles and some Metallica CDs to to <laughs> to East. They didn't say Florida, but they're coming back to Florida. And his dogs too. He's taking his dogs. Metallica dog CDs. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Like th- this is one of those things where I'm like, you got to do. No, mind you, I haven't seen it. I, it's pretty humorous. But whenever someone mentions something like in the moment, this is what I've learned from comedy, is we'll all be at like an open mic and somebody goes up and does a bit and everyone's preparing their material. But someone goes up and does a bit and like piques someone's interest. So now everyone has to talk about that thing. I was like, no, like just because yeah. everyone has to travel to some place to the same show, which you always do. You don't have to tell me what CDs you're going to listen to. You can, you can tweet about that. But that's just a petty thing, though. Uh, moving over to NXT. Really, really strong episode. Episode this week. Uh, the NXT Cruiserweight Tournament, I thought, has had really, really good matches, but the storylines haven't really cemented in until we got to see everyone. And the big storyline is Drake Maverick. What are they doing with Drake Maverick? Because uh, this is one of those superstars that was released just about two weeks ago. And now it seems like, uh, I'm sorry, I was moving too many things around here. Now it seems like Drake has the storyline to follow in this tournament. Uh, he is a guy who's been legitimately released by the company and could, in storyline, just because he cut promos online that people cared about, they've now said, why don't we just make that? A, why don't we just make that the storyline to follow here? His second match in the round robin kind of first round here, they're all in block competition. Swerve Isaiah Scott had a really, really strong match with Phantasma. I thought that was a great way to open the show and get the ball rolling on everything. I thought that was a very, very strong match, and Swerve needed the win. He was one of those guys I thought that unfortunately could get lost in the shuffle here. And Phantasma has a lot of hype coming to this tournament from being a superstar in Lucha, and, and he was kind of like one of the favorites, right? Right? So him taking a loss here and keeping Swerve strong, it could be a little bit of parody booking, but I was okay with it. But Drake Maverick, Tony Nese, Tony Nese made Drake look like a star. All right. And Drake took the moment, took it, and he's yelling, you're going to cry. You're going to cry. I know you need this, Drake. This is one of those things where trash talking And an empty arena match means so more. I've seen this with AEW quite a bit, where the dialogue that the wrestlers can espout in the ring has so much more. um, It it reveres with you a little bit more. It sticks with you a little bit more, and it adds so much more to the match. Uh, Keith Keith Lee did this in the main event as well. He said his catchphrase in the match. Kind of corny, but it works when there's no fans there. It kind of audibly fills the gaps. You hear the grunting. I remember when we were watching WrestleMania, everyone's like, Charlotte Rhea, it sounds so bad. If you if you had the if you just had the sound on and no one knew like they, they, what you were watching, they would think it was something else, right? Uh, but really, really strong. Drake Maverick advances. We're getting carry on cross next week for sure. This may be the biggest debut that they've been building to for quite some time. Dexter Loomis looked really strong. I like his finisher, the way they shot it, and they kept it on Shane Thorne's face the whole time. He got choked out. He's one of those guys that's doing something very, very simple, and it's working. Candice LeRae has a new theme song and a new finisher that is called The Wicked Stepsister, uh, named after a Disney villain, by the way. Cinderella, if you guys actually go back into the book there and look at that one. Uh, oh. Really, really strong. A lot of the new characters click this week. A lot of the established characters click this week. Great main event with Damian Priest and Big Keith Lee. I thought this is uh, better than that triple threat that they had with Donna and Dijakovic a few weeks ago. Keith Lee picked up a six foot seven man and threw him about nine feet onto the apron from the other side of the barrier. All right. So you get your freaky action here, a double spirit bomb at the finisher. He stopped them from hitting him with the nightstick. You could say, Oh, you know, the, the champions look strong tonight. They did. Adam Cole had a good, uh, good promo building up to the dream match. Surprise. We're getting a Velveteen dream match. If you follow the news, uh, and we got to see uh, Charlotte Flair, you know, get tested by Mia Yim. Mia Yim tapped out, but she, I don't think she got jobbed out. You can say that. Next week we get Io Shirai. I, I'm I'm feeling really good about NXT right now, and this is surprising because you know this is a show where everyone's kind of looking at what those takeover matches were going to be when they moved them over to TV. I really think it's the development of a handful of new guys and guys that they can already rely on being really strong, and the Cruiserweight tournament being really, really strong. If you told me a month ago Drake Maverick was the guy to watch on NXT, if you told me that Candice Ray being a heel is something you would you would bite into, I don't think I would have believed it, but I think it's fun to see things catch you off guard and click and work. Uh, and I think NXT has proven that, and also 
People can argue about WWE not developing superstars, but there's a lot of new things they're doing on that show. There's a lot of dice rolls that they're they're rolling and they're winning at the table right now. Uh, now, will that be a good rating? Who knows? But in terms of quality stuff, if you're a diehard fan and that's what the show is meant for, they're hitting it. It was a good show. Must-see show this week. You know what? And Kev, uh, to add to your point, uh, I mentioned earlier today, I'm not a consistent watcher of NXT, you know, because I'm usually watching AEW. Uh, I'm intrigued to watch NXT. And um, just, you know, with Carry On Cross showing up, who's one of my favorites, you got uh, guys like Timothy Thatcher, and you have Damian Priest, you have Dexter Loomis, who I always has fa- ha- felt had an intriguing look to him. And just to get know that those guys are getting such a spotlight and showcase on that show uh, definitely is leading my interest in watching it. I, I recorded tonight. I'm going to be watching it tomorrow. No doubt about it. Yeah. Mm. NXT sounds yeah. It's like a, fun. It's it's a show. Get in there, Robert. I'm sorry. Go ahead, buddy. NXT sounds like fun. It sounds like, you know, I'm interested in what Candace is doing. I like the, I'm going to be a villain, but I can't be anything other than a Disney villain. And I'm, <laughs> I'm with it. I'm very much into heel Candace LeRae. Yeah, and also the the you if you follow them, they're big Disney fans. Like they're big, they go to the park, they got the fast pass and all that stuff. And uh uh I've been going down the wormhole of Disney Imagineering on Disney Plus this week, so it caught me off guard. I was like, I'm not a Disney file by any means. I, oh, I like I just like how the parks are created. So it was one of the things that was like, ooh, that's like a cool little detail. Like I I, I liked it. I thought it was really neat, uh, especially if you just follow it here. Um so uh, a lot to get into. We will cover those big WWE buyout rumors here in a few minutes here. Uh, But overall, a strong, strong Wednesday night. Uh, People can say, oh, Raw's this or SmackDown that, and I don't like. But how how pretty consistently entertaining has Wednesday night's been here for the past few months? Yeah, I think it's been a beneficial. Yeah, it's been a beneficial uh, for fans. Just uh, it's been a nice little escape. I mean, like Robert said earlier, like he wasn't even thinking about this. COVID-19 until like you just brought it up. It's a, uh, it's a nice escape. And um, I feel like just even tuning in and hearing, getting into the group chat with uh, the wrestle zone guys and like hearing their clips about like, Oh, what's going on in NXT compared to what's going on in AEW. It's a fascinating, fun time to kind of be a wrestling fan and, and get invested. And also in because it. both shows are really good. You yeah. know, like yeah. they're, they're all they're both particularly good and they're taking risks that are working. I think wrestling fans want to see people take a risk, but want to roast them when it doesn't work. Like when the Viking Raiders tried that karaoke segment at Raw a few weeks ago. All right. They're already away from it. Right. But they tried something, you know, and I think I think that that should there should be something uh, awarded in that. Uh, I did not bring this up, but I do want to talk about this. I, AEW's been able to do some really, really funny segments. They've been able to do oh, some yeah. consistent comedy, whereas NXT has tried to be quite serious with a little bit of flair here and there, a little bit of levity here and there. Tonight, though, they went all in on a very, very hilarious segment that I have no problem saying is the funniest thing that maybe NXT has produced ever. Like, this is maybe the funniest segment they've ever had on television. It worked perfectly. We got to see more Renal and Beth Phoenix back on air. And I thought that was going to be the fun kind of like broadcasting element of tonight's show. A little hard because they're obviously not there. They're they're chiming in. I think they're using ISDN lines for them both at their homes, which is a very good thing. And Tom Phillips is there live, right? So I thought that was it. But then we had Byron Saxon pop up. We used the whole back graphic screen. We use all of the WWE entertainment gaga, the production that they have. Let's get something out of the space we're in, even without fans. And they did the newly bro show. This was the personality segment uh, that they could do here to really let you know that Timothy Thatcher is a straight shooter and Matt Riddle is a just bro. He's a jockey bro who can kick your ass and is going to say silly things. They said some great lines. It was like the newlywed game. They're trying to get to know each other, even though like Timothy Thatcher is his, his like interim tag team partner, even though he's the tag team champions. Uh, they brought up a threesome uh, in a living room, in a, in a uh, wash on a washer. It was he made a reference to waking and having his wife bake. <laughs> so <laughs> the key. Uh, Riddle is on another another track here in terms of personality stuff in NXT to the point where he doesn't have to be in the ring every week to be entertaining. And once you do that, you start to have a longer career. You start to be someone like Ric Flair. You start to be someone like The Rock or Austin where you can be utilized for those personality segments because they know you can do it. Uh, Byron Saxon was hilarious as an over-the-top 
uh, kind of a game show. Hey, what's going on? And uh, him asking Timothy Thatcher, I understand you pulled a man's eye out. Is that correct? And he goes, yes. Yes, I did do that. <laughs> and it, was, it was like perfect stuff. Uh, they had a beatdown segment. The Imperium interrupted it. But the personalities here and the the interaction really played out. If you don't love NXT and you're one of those AEW fans, I watch them I'm only for Cody and the Elite, and I wish to destroy Vince McMahon and his empire, blah, blah, blah. Just seek this out. Just watch it and be entertained by it. Robert, did you get to catch any of this? I did. Uh, no, but Tyler Treese. Uh, Wrestling.com was very, very into this segment, very into the threesome on a washer. I, I must look this up as soon as I get that here. Somebody, that's a Google trend right now. Threesome on a washer. Threesome on a washer. I mean, this weed there, there, are worse, there are worse things you could be doing during the quarantine. So, <laughs> all's well that ends well, I always say. Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I really enjoyed it, though. Let's get into the story that has been growing. And it's not I don't even want to call it a story because the story makes it seem like there's some legitimate facts behind it. Because we've heard about the rumor. Let's talk about what it really is. A rumor of a WWE buyout uh, being floated around for the better part of a year. Now, WWE had a huge financial year in 2019, scoring the biggest television contracts ever for a pro wrestling TV show. Two of them, one for Money at Raw uh, with NBC Universal and one for Fox, both of them over a billion dollars. Uh, they continue to have a very lucrative Saudi Arabia deal. But then, you know, the whole coronavirus thing happened. And that is uh, shaking the whole world up in this big way that we're not certain of right now. But we had uh, Dutch Mantel guy who has a lot of history in the wrestling industry, worked for WWE on camera and off, uh, tweeting out that I've heard from someone within the company that ESPN, aka Disney, and Fox were looking at buying out WWE and the network in some way. Uh, I want to make it clear, we, we've done some due diligence on this and, and looked around, and there, we haven't heard anything else besides this tweet. There, there hasn't been anything else to really spark this up recently this week. Now, obviously, it's a guy with some valid sources and connections, uh, and but it opens up a whole a whole wave of different questions and hearsay and speculation. So why don't we just dive into this hot tub of mystery that could be WWE being owned by two of the biggest media conglomerates in the world, but WWE's worked with both of them. You know, True, uh, WWE being bought is something I've heard since well before the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's something that Vince McMahon himself has referenced on these media calls and these financial calls. I refuse to believe this until the ink is dry on anything. I can't imagine the assets being sold between two entities. I will say that. I can see it going to one entity, perhaps an Amazon. But, you know, I mean... Uh, the Amazon story didn't get followed up on. We heard about that months ago, that Amazon, owned by Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men in the world, a massive company. They have Amazon Prime. They have a streaming service tied to their huge online retail company. And having something like WWE, which has a built-in, online, digitally engaged audience that wants to pay to watch and stream something would be a smart move. And that's why I think uh, an ESPN would want it. You know, ESPN plus Disney plus is a huge, huge platform. There's a lot, a lot of people on it. And then you have Fox, which is trying to develop their, their digital portfolio is kind of, people are moving to streaming and network television in a few years could be a secondary thing with streaming being the front thing, you know, like the roles reversing here. Uh, so they want that proprietary content with an engaged audience. I get the allure of it, even though fans yell about the ratings and different things like that. Get your head out of the ratings clouds, guys, because uh, a, a 1.8 rating is a, is a 5.0 rating 10, 20 years ago. So let's think about that before yeah. we before we rush to anything else. But but numbers are still down from even what they were a year ago, and mm -hmm. who knows? Like I hear here's, the thing. Here's, that I mean, here's that, the thing: thirteen point eight million people were engaged with WrestleMania in one weekend. Thirteen point eight. Like that's a lot of people, you know. There's a lot of people watching this show that aren't subscribers that are sitting around a TV and getting a password from somebody. 
that still has value, especially if you want to do a streaming service like ESPN Plus that has ads on it. If you want to do an ad thing, you can take the hit of like, all right, we're not going to have these hard subscriber numbers, but if we have enough advertisers and people are, and they download the app and they got it, we can do something here and make that difference. Uh, And maybe WWE is in in the spot where they're like, We've tried the network. We know we have this portfolio. We know we can support it, um, but we're always we're they're never going to get past that two million mark, right? So that's been the idea of that's why we'd want to go with another service. That's why we heard the reports about ESPN looking at doing their pay per view deal, but then that kind of stalled. Mind you, everything kind of stalled. Circumstantially, everything could change here. Uh, so. I don't know. There's so much to say that I don't know, but I agree with you. I think one company would want to own all of it, but look at what WWE's done. You know, they got that Fox deal. They got, they got smacked out. They got an NBC universal deal. They got raw and they got NXT there. Uh, They did, they aired WrestleManias on ESPN. So they're working with Disney, you know? So they, they've got their pool and a bunch of different things. And then you want to talk about international TV deals. They just signed a bunch of international TV deals. So they still have some commitments. They have to reach outside of there. So, Something makes me think, um, yeah, it'd be hard for me for Disney, which is such a family-focused company, to want to get something pretty violent. But, you know, they're Star owning Wars? some stuff that is – they Marvel? own Star Wars, they have Marvel, you know. The, so The ties to uh, UFC as well, you know. Yeah, ESPN, so they, they have some ties to UFC and they own ESPN. So, And if WWE was under the ESPN banner, that doesn't feel like a hard move. Like that feels like a pretty parallel move. Mm. I thought, There's a lot to think about. It's a lot to think about in regards to uh, not only that, but you think about um, what does this exactly mean if uh, one company does pick them up? Will the wrestlers start to be considered employees now instead of, you know, regards to yeah, the, structure, the independent the contract, of the company how change? the contracts work? A lot of things would change. I mean, I'll, I'll say this. You think, oh, this is great. If you're if you're one of those people that just thinks WWE needs to change, da 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 da. Uh, the the matter of the fact is, I don't think this sale happens without um, a McMahon influence on it. WWE is successful whether you like it or not because Vince McMahon is the the puppet master behind it. Whether you whether you think it f- has failed you or it has won for you. A lot of times it wins, and people say, "I love this wrestler, and I love this match, and I love this angle," and I. The, he's still the guy who's put this thing in the, in the place that it's in. And he's put people behind him to make it all possible. Um, I wonder how much influence he would have on it. And I think that's the my word- question too. That, that's my question too, Kev, is what, what will happen? Hey, say he sells the company. What does that mean structurally wise, as far as management goes, will they bring in somebody? Will triple H stay, stay around as like a top figurehead or will like a lot of suits, that maybe aren't familiar with wrestling and how wrestling's booked. Say what you will about McMahon, and I've said plenty about McMahon on how he's creatively handled things, but um, he, he still has those wrestling ties. If you get rid of that and you have somebody that doesn't know what's going on with wrestling, the whole creative aspect of uh, the WWE product could change as well. How dumb would that be? Like, yeah. let's really dive into this for a second. You sit there and you build an empire and you groom your son-in-law and your daughter and maybe your son. I don't know. They don't seem to talk about the son very much. <laughs> but And then you just go, you know what? But this guy here, he offered me money. <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry, boys and girls, but I'm going to go ahead and take the money. That's all about the money. <laughs> Insert the gif of Vince just smelling yeah. money. <laughs> the best how, gif ever. How, how asinine is that? How much of a slap in the face is that to Hunter, to Steph? To, they're more than capable of taking it over. I don't think that there's any reason to sell outside well, of money. Also, it, it, isn't, it may not even be a, a matter of that. I mean, this is still a publicly traded company with a lot of other money involved in it. I mean, we, we can talk about, oh, they have controlling interest in it, and they still do. You know, uh, and you know, people say, oh, they've sold stock and all these different things and lawsuits. That's fine. There, there's probably right now, there's probably a dozen lawsuits at Disney right now. Just that you run at that space. It's you're going to get sued. Someone's going to want to sue you because they know you have money. Right. Uh, so there, there's a bunch of different things there. So brush that aside. Uh, I, I think uh, I agree with you. It is weird, but I do think the worst thing that could happen is someone who is from the Hollywood side of things and WWE is certainly been a part of that for a long, long time, comes in. Wrestling is a very particular world with a very particular audience. And I think Disney 
put the right gloves on when they handled Marvel and they, they said, hey, we're going to let this be its own thing. Uh, with Star Wars, I think they said, no, we have to we have to put the Disney touch on this and really make it feel a certain way. My worst thing I could think is is if a Disney um, came in and took WWE and said, like, all right, we're going to get this down to TVPG completely, and we're not going to have this, and we're going to have that, and um, we're going to force some things. That, that would be the worst, and to not have McMahon a part of it, because whether you like it or not, he's the mad scientist of the sports entertainment boom. And that is what made wrestling the most profitable, the most relatable, the most diverse, and the most uh, widespread it's ever been in multiple different generations now. Uh, I, you've got to have a McMahon or a Triple H involved in this if it's going to be something like that, if you're going with Disney. Uh, now, if NBC Universal wanted to get it, that would be different because I think it, they, they've had such a long standing relationship through USA with it uh they're launching the peacock network they would want some proprietary stuff on there uh they would want something behind a paywall maybe on there uh, but the thing about peacock as well their streaming service which is going to have you know all the snls all the shows you see on nbc but like the art the back archive and stuff like that too is they're going to have a free version of it right away you're going to have a free version of it similar to like you know when hulu started that it'll be free and you'll be able to watch some stuff on there too uh, but another thing to be worthy about is that you know, WWE has a lot of international deals here that would have to be changed or augmented that I don't see being changed or augmented right away. So just, you know, we're being hypothetical here. Uh, you know, is it something that's being talked about? Maybe. We've heard a little bit about it. But this most recent thing with Dutch, I'm not saying it isn't true, but who knows? I mean, I bet they get offers every single year or at least some offers every year. Yeah, and you know what? We haven't heard. You're right. We haven't heard anything other than that. Like I thought when I saw a little another headline about it, I saw it yesterday for the first time, and I was like, "Hey, is this uh, newsworthy?" But um, you look. If that's the only thing going right now, you really can't base a whole lot off of that. Besides Dutch's own credibility, which he's he is credible, but it's just like we almost need a little more traction than that to get word. Because otherwise, all these other outlets that we've you know we follow and that we're a part of, there's no word coming out otherwise. Listen, I'm going to leave it at this. It's 2020. Have you not looked around you? Anything is possible. He's right. I, would not, I would not put it past you. If we're talking in June. So WWE sold. What about that? Like, I it, mean, if you told me in November, Edge was going to be the guy that made Royal Rumble this wonderful show in January, something we reported at WrestleZone.com, or, or that you told me in the beginning of 2019 that AEW was going to be able to, you know, really give WWE a fight on Wednesday nights head-to-head on television, I wouldn't believe you. So, you know, I expect expect some unbelievable things, but at the same time, you know, some of these stories have been already backed, you know, backed up a little bit and, and backpedaled. The ESPN story with WWE moving pay-per-view over there, I think that's all circumstantial. Because then we saw when WWE really made this push to say, Hey, the network, look, look at reminding you, look at what we have on the network. You're at home. You have all this extra time. Go try the network for 30 days. Yeah. Um, I do think they've settled into the idea that they're only going to have 1.4, 1.5 to 2 million subscribers. Um, it's still a profitable model. Think about that. Do the math. That's $10 a month for 1.4 million people. Are you doing a Netflix Disney plus number? No, but you're, you're, you own your library and you're getting that money every month. Um, if you don't like running money at Raw and SmackDown, you can watch every Mid South wrestling match ever right now. You can watch every WCW match ever. There is some value in that. And I will always say, I think whether you hate it or you love it, it's the best thing. It's ever happened to wrestling fans. The network is for me the best, like next to WrestleMania, the, the best creation for a wrestling fan in terms of like a resource and a library and something you can enjoy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look at all the podcasts that capitalize on it. And they just, yeah, just a, a good escape for fans to go and just uh, uh, WWE network and chill, so to speak. Uh, yeah, Herman Takar texts you and say, it's all Carol Baskin's fault. <laughs> We're just going to blame Carol Baskin from Tiger King for all this. Yeah. yeah. Funny like story we had in WrestleZone. Did you, did you, uh, funny story, I don't know if either one of you guys reported it, but I did enjoy reading it quite a bit. Matt Taven from Ring of Honor Wrestling uh, told a story recently about how the uh, some him and some other Ring of Honor wrestlers were in Oklahoma for a show, and they saw a billboard 
for Joe Exotic from the very talked about trashy docu series Tiger King, and they said we got to go to this, and they went, and because they, one of them is from Jay Lethal is from Tampa, Florida, all of the wrestlers were watched like hawks because they thought they were spies for Carol Baskin from Tampa, Florida, to spy on Joe Exotic. So if you're a Tiger King fan, that was a pretty funny story. Uh, speaking of Ring of Honor, I do want to talk to you about this, uh, and I want a little bit more of that AEW perspective on this. Marty Scroll was the superstar they wanted that they didn't get. And he signed a long-term deal with Ring of Honor and Sinclair Broadcasting, which also made him the head booker of the company. Now, Ring of Honor is completely on pause right now, but they are putting out digital content, releasing a lot of their back catalog. And they released a podcast, the ROH Strong Podcast. And you should start with the guy who has the pencil, right? And it's, Mar- it's Marty Scroll, who's also one of their top wrestlers, too. Uh, he said he's into the idea of collaborating with All Elite Wrestling. And would like to do it when the time is right. AEW, Ring of Honor, a tag team, a dream, or a bad idea? Robert, I start with you. Dominic, I'm going to go to you. Oh, come on. Why are you deflecting? I went to you first, Robert. Be a professional. You're not going to like what I have to say about this. Dominic, take, take it away. (laughs) <laughs> leave, uh, leave it to the enemy of fun Robert DeFelis to say that he's going to upset you Dominic get in there you know uh, ROH um, has really fallen off uh, I think a lot of wrestling fans radars just uh, and all before Marty Skrull took over or anything like that but I also you know they still got the name they still got those letters ROH and it still might have some ring to it to a lot of fans that appreciate uh the legacy that the company has done so i feel that it could be um a viable crossover opportunity for roh aew i don't think they could they would stand to lose or necessarily gain anything from having them there um a lot of the like the two other promotions that I are do. mostly I on do my think radar, they would gain something from it they, they would gain something that they can't create which is uh, a legacy they don't have a legacy yet you know, it's a it's a company that's only been around a year. Ring of Honor is history, and this is a hardcore brand, right? The one thing that All Elite can't make is exp- is like a time built experience because they've only been around like a year, right? And they they have some things they've built up to, but like legacy characters, they they can bring them back and have these moments with Diamond Dallas Page, but there is something about. Um, Ring of Honor bringing up and changing the culture of wrestling over the last 20 years that they can't create. They can't recreate that. They can reference it. They can say something about it. They can have a, they can have an older wrestler like Diamond Dallas Page come out and have a moment and stuff like that. But there's some things they can do with ROH that build on the hardcore audience with a time-built experience. And I do think that is something they're capable of doing and uh, maybe something that Ring of Honor is capable of doing on their own with the platform they have now, syndicated on television. You don't know where you can see it every night in every market. Uh, and I think, obviously, ROH would benefit more from the, from from this type of relationship than maybe AEW might. Uh, but if, if you're looking at what you could do with that secondary show, Ring of Honor being involved in that, if you're looking at also, this is another thing too, is we say we can do live events again, right? An ROH AEW card together, that's a hot ticket. That's a ticket that people would want to buy and see is live. It, but is, is it though? Really- is it no, that's the question because you think about that you you mentioned that they have this legacy and stuff, but do they anymore? The stars of ROH aren't necessarily the stars of like the American Dragon, Daniel Bryan, or Nigel McGuinness, or Samoa yeah. Joe, or CM Punk. You don't have that. You have Marty Scroll, which is great. You have like PCO, which has his own intrigue, and uh, guys like Shane Taylor and Taven, even. But it's like, it's still not that. I don't know. I feel like brands like an NWA or even like I might be biased that MLW have a little bit more intrigue at the moment than uh, ROH does, like in the scope of wrestling right now. It's just that's True. and you look back to you look at uh, the the Madison Square Garden uh, show at New Japan like it felt really big being there but mm-hmm. how does it feel right now like it, it feels like I, I, oh like, I, I think Ring of Honor made a lot of big calls on that show I can they tell made, you I mean right now one of those companies yeah. is going back to Madison Square Garden it's not Ring of Honor. Like, Enemy of fun, Robert DeFelis. I, I mean, I mean, like, let's. Well, see. New Japan's not either, though, Rob. <laughs> it's not. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to do that. Probably not. Right but they were scheduled yeah. to, and that's what matters. Now, 
now let's let's be real about this. Since Kevin said some things here, he said they stand to gain a legacy. I will sit here and genuinely argue that in the year that AEW has been a concept and a promotion, they have created more of a legacy that is viable and will last longer in the minds of people than Ring of Honor did in the last, I would say, 10 years of their existence. They've been around almost they have 20. $100 million backing. But it's still That's more helps, than what though. Ring of Honor is doing. It's, it's yeah, it, it helps, but I'm saying Ring of Honor, no matter what they have, they still have this integrity-based brand. They still have, you want the kick-ass wrestling, you're going to get it here. And AEW has sought that. I'm not, if you want to shut people up that are like the WWE fans that like critique AEW, them working with an ROH or an NWA or, or an MLW, like that, that collaboration is another way to do it. And it's something that WWE won't do that AEW can do and is open to doing. I think the reason the reasons for not doing it to me are less than the reasons to do it. Like that that's what I'm saying. I'm like the possibilities are more more, I think, engaging to me. I'm asking you realistically, outside of I'll give you five acts. Marty Scroll, the Briscoes, Jay Lethal, John Gresham, and maybe PCO. What does AEW stand to gain from the acts that Ring of Honor is currently presenting? Not very much. We we still fresh matchups. They're, they're, they're a matchup-driven brand, all right? They would have a bunch of fresh matchups that they can't make themselves right now. They're so driven on this tournament, uh, and that's done. They're going to get out of this period. I, th- I just think it'd be a cool idea. I don't think it's too wrong to say it's something to look into. And, and also, I think it's something that fans would get into uh, over time. You want to talk about I, – I, I, Go ahead, Dom. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Well, I feel like somebody else, somebody James is mentioning here on the feed too that ROH would be uh, better to team up with NWA, Impact, and MLW. And Kev, like what you're saying too, I if you do it all as like these other promotions coming out and, and coming into AEW, I feel that would pack more of a punch than just having ROH. And even saying that, I feel ROH is still out of all three companies still. Of the like the four three companies going into it, I feel they would benefit the most out of that because of their name has been hurt this past year and a half or however long it's been. I mean, really, really <clears throat> if I'm Ring of Honor, I take this time off. They're not doing any shows right now. Come back with a fresh logo, a fresh vision, like a completely redone marketing scheme. Because right now, I'm telling you, it's not doing it. Ring of Honor has been away for a few months, and I haven't for like a minute thought, oh, man, I am really missing Ring of Honor television right now. That's not, that's not necessarily as a knock on them as it is. They're not a compelling product right now. You know, and I think that's fair. You've got MLW. That's a hell of a show. And I mean, MLW does things in small bunches, but they do it right. Impact, kind of in the same boat as Ring of Honor, but even they have more of a platform with Access TV and whatnot. NWA has created a revolution out of small things. Ring of Honor right now is living on the legacy of guys that in some cases aren't even in the business anymore. They need a fresh take. Mm. Mm -hmm. and maybe but you what what are we going to do it's all on pause right so we they haven't even really had an opportunity to do that so i I don't want to hold circumstances against them if it it isn't something they're bouncing off of right uh but i do think it's interesting that marty scroll a guy who clearly has some influence in the company that's his job right now um would want to do that and be into that idea and he said that that he talks with the bucks all the time right um uh, and i think there's something there uh, do want to bring this up here. In a few weeks, Warner Media will launch HBO Max. It is a $15 a month streaming service that will feature everything from a prequel to Game of Thrones, everything HBO, everything with DC superheroes, many different exclusive shows. Elmo is going to have a late night talk show on it for some reason. Really? Conan O'Brien will produce comedy content. It's a major media company with another big streaming service. We talked a little bit earlier on the show about that, but I do want to get into this. Uh, they did the big rollout about nine months ago. They've had AEW under their fold since. We know that they do have the BR Live, a sports and oriented streaming service, and AEW presents their big pay-per-views on 
a $50 a month, got to pay for it, the old way pay-per-view model, even though you can get it digitally, right? Is AEW not getting the shine they deserve by not being a part of the HBO Max presentation of Warner Media? I have to ask that question because, I mean, there's going to be a significant amount of people that try this service right out of the gate. It has a lot to offer. Uh, it, it, it may it may be catching up with a Netflix and a Disney Plus, and it's pretty expensive. Fifteen bucks is more than what you're paying for Netflix, right? People are going to say that. Um, but could this put them on a platform next to some really big brands? Give them the rub. Uh, I I think if they're not on it, there's something wrong here. You know, I mean, they signed a new TV deal with TNT owned by Warner. They could be a part of that presentation. It could be the biggest thing for them. Uh, I think it really. All right, the last hurdle for them, I think, is how they present papers. How how you get it, how you see it. Is it is it going to feel like the WWE Network? This is the closest you could get to it, if not better. Rob, you want to take it first? Uh, yeah, I think AEW is fine on their own. We have no idea that the HBO Max platform and if they will have an offering for live television. I'm sure when the time comes, they'll be added to things like, hey, maybe Chris Jericho's on Elmo, Elmo's late night talk show which you just or, or just seeing episodes of dynamite on it maybe. i mean if you just get you know next night episodes of dynamite on it too maybe there's that too you know maybe we get uh, a test run of a of a pilot of a show that's maybe kind of like remember reaction from tna that's yeah. like backstage you know do something the, like that the, you know that was part of it in the january when they signed that tv extension that was i think the reason they're they're in such a healthy place right now all things considered um that that deal really really helped them out i wonder what position they would be in if tnt would keep supporting them with all the circumstantial stuff going on in the world um them putting a second branded show just behind a paywall on hbo max with a whole bunch of other content and separate storylines you know that there's something there uh there's a they are there if, if you will. So uh, I think it's weird that we haven't heard anything about that. And the dots are so clear to connect and that that would be such a big thing for them. Uh, and I, the main hurdle you and I hear is, you know, when all out came up, when double or nothing, double or nothing is going to come up in a few weeks are, I think it's going to have this real big hurdle of fans and say, I love AEW, but I'll watch a show with no fans, but I don't know if I want to pay for a show with no fans and pay a pay-per-view price, not just $10. Ten dollars to some people a month is not a big deal. Um, I certainly do not want to pay a full price for a show with no fans. I mean, it's I don't think that's unreasonable in 2020 to say, hey, sixty dollars for one show, maybe not for me. Did did they release a price point on it yet at all? Fifteen dollars a month will be what you pay for HBO Max. No, no, I mean for uh, for the pay per view for. Uh, or the pay per view double or not? We have I haven't heard a price point on it just yet. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. check right now just to see if yeah. Give me give me a look up on that uh, on there, Robert. There, uh, we because, are. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Kev. Of, of no audience and you're paying for it. Uh, yeah, you know, forty nine ninety nine. Revolution so, forty nine ninety nine. Okay. So you're paying a pay per view price for this. Paying pay per view price, and you know, I I wouldn't have much as much of a problem paying for it if you know. It's your circumstantial, typical live audience craziness, but you're. It's a. It's a fair point. Will people pay that kind of money to see? I feel like Bleacher Report has. They've done pretty good numbers with the pay per view buys, haven't they? In the past, um, but they've done pretty. They've done some healthy numbers in the hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollar range in pay per view. Now, mind you. That that isn't a WWE number. I think that's fair to say yeah. in terms of pay per view. Uh, WWE has the network. There's millions of people that watch WrestleMania this year. Millions. That's that's. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not overstating that number by any means. Uh, and the numbers we we hear about uh, AEW are limited because they're not a publicly traded company. They don't have to put all that number out. Uh, back in the day when WWE was still doing traditional pay per view as their main source of putting out premium content, this year they mentioned you could get WrestleMania on pay per view. Right, so a lot of people thought they were going back to that. Uh, but back in the day, before the network, you would get all those numbers and they would come out. AEW is in a position where they technically don't want you to know all of those numbers and they don't want all of those things. If, if an advertiser looks at it and says, well, how many people actually bought the last show? Do we want to sponsor it? And AEW, whether you want to say it is in the game now of trying to do all the things to build up and flex out the company. And part of that is licensing and marketing agreements and the way they present things. We're going to put ads on the ring. We're going to, you know, say all the different things that WWE won't do in terms of an ad sponsor relationship. 
so uh, you know, when you look at all that stuff, uh, I just think getting the rub of being one click away from Game of Thrones or the Justice League or Cartoon Network is the best thing you can. I thought the rub that they got from and the Rick and Morty collaboration when they were on TV was incredible, you know, and that they were trending with Rick and Morty, the one of the most talked about TV shows right now. Um, but if they get lost in the shuffle here and they say, oh, we're going to put you on BR Live here. No rip to BR Live. You're asking a small amount of people to pay big pay-per-view prices. The platform has shifted to one flat price. You get a whole bunch of different stuff. And we're going to try and keep you in here every month, dropping that money. And we get a hard line of money from you. And we've seen the revenue skyrocket for WWE because they took that risk, went with that model. And now we're talking about, you know, multi-billion dollar TV deals and companies buying them, you know. So there's a risk that I think AEW could take, but it's hard for them to take those risks and say, hey, all right, we're we're going to within a year of launching and having these pay-per-views where you paid 50 bucks, uh, now we're going to give it to you for 15. Um, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I would hope that even if you don't get those events live and like we mentioned, HBO max doesn't exactly have a live streaming model. Uh, but if you told, I, I think the other problem could be, Hey, pay 50 bucks for this. And in two weeks, it'll be on HBO max. There could be a lot of people that are really miffed by that, you know, and especially yeah. with hardcore fans that are really boisterous. You know, they love the idea that they listen to their fans and engage them. So it's all hypothetical. We, I know we're doing a lot of hypothetical speculation type things, but I thought it was something worth checking in on. And we'll certainly look at it a few, in a few more weeks, especially when HBO Max uh, premieres uh, and, and gets on TV there. So overall, keeping it busy here. Uh, and we're, we're very, very thankful to everyone. Uh, very, very thankful to all you guys. I know you have a lot of options for wrestling media. You can go uh, to the UK guys at Wrestle Talk. You can listen to the Wrestling Observer. You could uh, be listening to Conrad and Bruce and, and all that stuff. A lot of great content out there in the wrestling world right now. But you went with WrestleZone, and I know I know Robert, even though he doesn't like fun, appreciates that you're having fun here a little bit. He wants you to be here so he can make fun of you, so then he has fun. He's the enemy of your fun, Robert. No, no. I, as long as you're having fun while well, I get to talk about what makes me angry. I don't really care. If you're having fun, <laughs> good for you. Uh, the closest thing we have to the Grinch. Uh, Dominic, what do we have coming on on this week's episode of Danny Cage and Double D? It's going to be an interesting one, uh, particularly since uh, Damian Priest made event at uh, NXT tonight, um, and that's one of uh, Danny Cage's trainees. So uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that. I want to get Danny's take on Drew McIntyre and how he's been doing these past few weeks. Um, and, um, just the, just the constant ongoing with, uh, a lot of the, like the wrestling in the empty arenas, it's been a very fascinating topic to discuss with him and the different takes that he's given, uh, the unconventional takes in a lot of ways that he's get a perspective that he, he lends, uh, to seeing what WWE can do to improve, uh, their, that experience for them and for their fans. So those might be some of the topics we'll be covering, uh, this week coming up. So I'm looking forward to it. We haven't talked in, in a good amount of time. So it'll be neat ne- to catch up on all the latest stuff with him. And we got like how many episodes out now? Like three episodes, right? Three episodes. So this will be episode four that drops this week. Yep. Okay. And that's coming up on Monday, correct? Uh, might be a little earlier. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think the plan is to record it tomorrow and then it should be up maybe by the weekend before the weekend. Uh, and yeah. definitely go and get those wrestle zone radio, the podcast feed. You get four episodes of wrestle zone daily with Robert to myself, uh, coming on after raw and smacked on after NXT, those afternoon shows as well. Exclusive interviews. We're dropping this one. AEW world champion, John Moxley, an exclusive. We talked to him back in November and he said a lot of stuff like Chris Jericho going got shit on me what happened there he took the belt off him well we're talking about his new movie cage fighter also also a former wwe world champion who i cannot name just yet is also going to be in the podcast feed all of it for free no patreon no no paying a subscription fee you get it for free all right, we're not on HBO Max, and I don't think we will be. Uh, so, uh, so you, you guys could uh, go get that Wrestle Zone Radio on your podcast app of choice. We are working on the Spotify thing, Robert. We're, we're that's a next project we're working on here. Yes, we are, and you know, I look forward to being on Spotify. I look forward to getting out to the Wrestle Zone X with more platforms. I look forward to potentially an upcoming idea that may include myself. You and even Dom, and maybe even some outside should, sources. Should I talk about it? 
I think I think yeah. I think the the tease is good enough because oh. <laughs> he's oh man you are a heel Robert I tell you what no Holy no fuck. no the tease is good enough I'll tell you what I want it to be a fully fleshed out idea Dom okay. you, you don't go in halfway you you know you get gotta gotta go in all the way there but double D's oh. another sexual reference there Robert <laughs> yeah listen it's okay. Heel commentator. Enemy fun, filth. He's he's. Uh, he's Robert's called an evil turn. Debauchery. Sheer debauchery. Okay. Yeah, Heel commentators are supposed to sound buffoonish. <laughs> I am well within the right. Would you stop? <laughs> um, and as for me, you know, I write for WrestleZone five days a week. And when I'm not writing for WrestleZone, I write for Fightful. If you do want to go to a paywall, there is Fightful Select. Sean Russ out. There's great work, great exclusive news, great content, great articles. Just go check them out. Support them. Thank you for supporting them and me and Kevin and Dom. And yeah. Do want to remind you, Yummy in the Bank, our video game fast food fracas funny joke. We'll go down the afternoon of Money in the Bank. Yummy in the Bank, all your fast food mascots, one video game ring. We got to figure out the undercard here. We got we to figure out who else is going to well, be in we, there. We've got but- the Grimace and the Gooker, I think. <laughs> the grimace, and the, grimace and the Gooker sounds like a really bad morning radio show. It's, a, it's the <laughs> most grimace awkward the morning. <laughs> it, it's the most awkward thing you could ever see. It's it's a Thanksgiving turkey fighting the purple stuff you never want to see on your Thanksgiving turkey. It, it's it's very strange. That will be the championship match. And then there's the, of course the Yummy in the Bank ladder match where the Coke Bear, the Colonel, Wendy, Burger King. Ronald McDonald and the Taco Bell dog will all try to fight for that one greasy, greasy coupon that will give them an opportunity at the title. So that's my yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. A lot, a lot of ridiculous jokes, especially for the diehard fans of the show. Want to remind you guys, uh, if you never catch us here on Facebook, get the podcast or over on YouTube. So we're posting the shows up on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, I do want to remind you guys, uh, tomorrow, uh, my my radio home, 101 WKQX, is joining the National Radio Cares effort for Feeding America. Uh, and many, 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 many radio stations around the country are going to be doing this. But you can listen to 101 WKQX, and you can go and and donate to Feeding America at 101wkqx.com. This benefits hundreds, hundreds of food banks that are helping out people. You know, the one crazy thing about the coronavirus is there's so many people not working that there's they're put in this position where you hear about people that need a food bank, and maybe now you know someone that does. Or maybe it's not something where you need it every day, but you need it to get the gas before you go get your groceries, you know? So there, there's a lot of people that are being helped out here. A lot of middle-class people, you may not think need this, are using this. And the lines are long, and they need your help. All right? So listen to 101wkqx.com. Tomorrow you can stream us anywhere on iHeart, on TuneIn, and we're going to be doing the effort all day long. You can donate at 101wkqx.com. It is Alternative Rock out of Chicago, but you can listen to it anywhere if you like music green day we're gonna play a lot of cool stuff a lot of big commercial free music as well so something good in the background while you pretend to work from home uh, check that out tomorrow thursday uh here on 101 wkqx on your phone wherever all right i've done the plugs i think we're done uh robert uh i know you're you've been, you've made a, made a bit of a heel turn tonight robert all right i don't i don't like the change all right maybe you're going to change your hair color like candace LeRae. uh but Spoilers, i need to know <laughs> He's gonna come back next week. It's gonna be all like fuchsia and dark red. Yeah. Spoilers, <laughs> Kevin. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so Robert, we watch this wrestling. What we gotta do? We gotta uh, Jesus. We gotta just enjoy wrestling. Uh, don't make it sound like a chore. Did you hear him, Dominic? <laughs> I did the oh, softball. Oh. I did the softball oh, layup dunk uh, for him. I'm sorry. I did I'm the soft. No, no, I'm Robert. Robert, come radio. on now. I'm not the wacky radio plug guy. Guys, let me tell you, when you're watching this wrestling, you know, I know it's a lot of kookiness and it's not really essential, but it's all good because Conan O'Brien's making fun of us. Just sit back <laughs> and enjoy wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you <That's> dork. <laughs>